these bearings, you can, how they are on there, you can mismatch them. It doesn't matter. It's each half, you can move this half from here to over there. It doesn't matter. These, these are all um, separately manufactured, one piece. So, it, you know, there is no respective mating side of this bearing. Index point. Now we got all those out. We're going to uh, gonna go through and clean all these in another, another segment. I'm going to show you inspecting a rod, make sure your rod's good. A lot of times these will go out. The motor leans out. <clears throat> it leans out. This is your first point of contact with the air. This will be the spot that goes bad first on your crank and on your rod. If you're lucky, you don't take the crank out. Oh. Cylinder number one, right here. This is the one that had the non John at Johnson Evinrude factory part. Look at the spot on our crankshaft. Now, I am unsure if that spot on the crankshaft was generated by this bearing, or that that spot on the crankshaft was generated from when this motor failed initially and they replaced it with this bearing. However, this crankshaft is bad. Spot running all the way across it like that, it's like a pothole in the road. The more it runs over it, runs over it, runs over it, the pothole gets bigger, everything starts to fall apart. So, I am officially gonna condemn this crankshaft due to that spot on it. Um, crankshafts do get very expensive, very, very pricey. Um, and that's all incorporated into you know, building one of these motors. You you can't you, you can't, as I said before, um, leave anything to chance when the safety of your family and your guests come into play, and yourself for that matter. Okay, we're gonna pop this crankshaft out. We have that out. There's our block. We'll take a good look at it. A bunch of scoring in here. <clears throat> also, cylinder number one, the one that side that, that, that had the uh, aftermarket bearing in it. So what it tells me is the first time this motor blew up, it leaned out because the first point of contact with the air is this. Drive this bearing out. Took, probably took that journal of the crankshaft out, that crank pin of the crankshaft out, and segments of the uh, metal that was destroyed got uh, <clears throat> got lodged in between the, the crank and that, and etched this up a bit. It's not bad. I don't see any cracks in it. However, when I do have this block taken to the machine shop, I am going to have them test this and make sure that there are no permeations in the metal. A permeation in, in, in your metal right there will bleed to the other cylinder, it, it, it won't run, it'll never run right. So we're gonna make sure, we're gonna have them, they put dye in here, and then they test, they check the other side to see if the dye has come through. Pretty, uh, pretty simple way of doing it, but it works. Okay, the rest of this thing looks really good. I'm gonna make a note for my machinist, buddy Mike, to uh, check this and make sure that there are no uh, leaking passages. 
we've already predetermined this crankshaft is, uh, is bad. So, uh, I'm going to take a look at what the rest of it looks like. I'm using my vice as a tripod right now. I use I have a uh, crankshaft that I stick in here and I can stand this, uh, or a drive shaft that I stick in here and I can stand this uh, crankshaft up and uh, inspect it. And, uh, but I'm using my vice as a tripod right now. So uh, there will be do no doing that. <clears throat> This guy comes off here, slide right off. This has got your lower main seal in it. It's got an O-ring around it. We're gonna take all that stuff out of there, discard it, put new stuff in. This bearing down here, seems like it's a good bearing. We'll end up removing this bearing, putting putting it on our on our good crankshaft that uh, we're gonna have to find. I might have one laying around here. I might have to buy one, I don't know. This seal will come off. Go in the trash can. Check our mains out. There's a keeper pin on the mains. And they split. And then your bearing will come out. And these bearings, just like the rod bearings, they're, you can mix and match them, doesn't matter. These, however, not the case. And there's, uh, you'll be able to see very clearly on these races that they <clears throat> how they're made. See this? No, right? <laughs> see this? They make this in one piece. There's a little notch there and a little notch there. They put this on a they put this on a press and it splits it. These are perfectly mated, split sleeves like that. In a, in a not so exaggerated fashion, that's exactly how the connecting rods are. This is very exaggerated, so you can see that it, you know, that, that there's no way that this one's going to match up to another one unless it's, you know, perfectly this, this match. So, Take that keeper ring out of there. Put that back around that guy. inspect each one of these very closely before we reassemble it. I don't see any initial um, initial bad spots on it, so I think it's probably good, but <clears throat> stay true to our whole plan here. We're going to inspect every portion with a fine tooth comb make sure that everything's good on it. Okay, you can see again, very exaggerated crack in that. And how it fits back together. Now you can tell, I mean, you can see very plainly that uh, you can't mix and match that with any other part. One of these, one of these halves is bad, goes away. Goes in the trash can, goes in the scrap pile. But, now, we have our uh, seal rings. These are just like a piston ring. They go on the uh, crankshaft. It closes it together like that. It seals each cylinder off from each other. Unlike a uh, four-stroke motor, where it all rides in the same uh, in the same air in the same cavity in the bottom of the oil pan, this uh, all of um, every one of your every one of your strokes. As your intake is pulled through there, 
they're all operating on a on a different uh, at, a, at, at a different point, obviously. All the air is drawn past here, but they get, each one has got to stay separated because due to the it's a two-stroke. This bearing is being lubricated by the oil and the fuel, so the oil and fuel has to pass across that bearing in order to reach its its final destination, the combustion chamber. Therefore, these are all sealed off from each other. come off there pretty simply. One more, one more bearing up here. force these when you're taking them off there. Oh, I went the wrong way on it. Because <clears throat> they are very brittle. They'll snap real easy on you. I go down to uh, stay off the off the journal. But under this is the crank crank pin, this is a journal. bad spot in it so uh, it's going to go in a scrap pile. There's a place that re redoes them. We might send it off to them and have them send us another one um, as a core but usually we don't do things like that. Um, I'm sure I probably have another crankshaft laying around here brand new in the box and uh, that's what's going to go back in this motor. Okay, one last thing for you.